In this video, I'm going to show how to take live data from a view model and use it in an autocomplete text view in Jetpack Compose in Android. Now, one footnote, there is no such thing as an autocomplete text view in Jetpack Compose. We had it in the older XML-based layout, but surprisingly not in Jetpack Compose. And here's what I mean by autocomplete text view. Notice if I start typing in this country outline text field, it will give me suggestions based on what I'm typing, and it will continue to filter as I continue to type. I like this component because it's very efficient. We get a lot of results with just a little bit of typing, and that's very important in Android. Because think about when you use an Android device. Many times it's when you shouldn't be using an Android device. When you're in a meeting, when you're in a classroom, when you're driving, when you're taking a shit in the morning. So it's important to be able to get a lot of leverage out of very little user input. That tends to be a good user experience. If you know of a good autocomplete text view type component to use in Jetpack Compose, please let me know. I am recording this video a bit early in the life cycle of Jetpack Compose. It was only released in beta within the last 12 months or so. So it's very likely that one will eventually come about. But all the searching I did, I was unable to find one out of the default Jetpack Compose library. However, I did do a bit of searching, and I found one on Stack Overflow that I was able to use. Somebody just wrote one, and so I want to give credit to this author, Amir Hossein. I copied and pasted this, and I'm able to change a little bit and get it to work, and that's the demonstration that I showed you earlier. So I'm going to do that in this video. But our focus isn't necessarily on the internals of how this works as much as it is how to hook up live data to be used in this component. So I'll copy, paste, change a few things. I won't explain every nook and cranny of this solution, but we know that it works. And of course, I'll push this to GitHub so that you can see it there. I've started a new branch on the GitHub repository to make it easier to find this. Firebase, Live Data, and Autocomplete. In a later video, I'm going to use Firebase as well. So go there. You're welcome to take this, copy, paste it, alter it as you wish. I'll start by pasting in what I got from Stack Overflow with a few modifications that I made. Now scroll to the top, and it's actually a couple of composable functions. Uh, first of all, we have some kind of data that's coming in. This for me is going to be a list of plant objects because that's what we're getting from our live data. And Alt Enter to import. Drop down options here. We also want to change it to a list of plant like so. I could probably get cute and do some things with generics to make this a bit more reusable, maybe even move it to a, an external class or something. But nonetheless, we'll leave that for a future refactoring. Go ahead and import anything we need to import as well. Scroll down a little bit, and there's text field with drop down. Again, we're going to change the list type to plant. And then several items that I need to import. And naturally, Alt Enter in Android Studio or IntelliJ will help us a lot with those imports. Now, on value changed, str selected data, this is going to be whatever the user has finally entered. And I probably am going to want to use this somewhere else. So I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring here. Currently, this function and my other composable functions are not in the main activity class. You see, the main activity class ends here. So I'm going to remove that close curly, and I'm going to move it all the way to the bottom of all the work I've done so far. I actually I'll tell you what, yeah, we'll, we'll put it right here. And then thankfully everything automatically indents. Now I can go back to the top and I can declare a variable, which is essentially going to be an attribute of str selected data. And now we'll be able to reference this in other parts of our application. And you see that it resolves. And so our red lines are complete. Now this text field with drop down usage, I'm going to invoke it from the specimen facts that I created in a different video. So basically, I did have this outline field here, which was just a normal text field. I'm going to remove this and replace it with that autocomplete text view that I've created. So I'll simply delete and we'll call the function text field with drop down usage. Now we don't yet have this collection of plans, so I'll just initialize it with an empty array list. Because at this point, I simply want to run in the emulator and make sure that this gives me the look and feel that I want. Then we can hook up the collection of plants. 
the emulator has started up and w we look pretty close. I realize I also need to change the label because it just says label. And of course, at this point, we're not going to get any, anything to autocomplete because we have not put any data in there. But this is all fixable. Here's where we have the label hard-coded to label. And I could change it right here, but I really want to parameterize this instead. So comma and then label string. And we'll just give it a default of nothing. We'll change it here from label equals label and quotes. We'll simply take away the quotes. And notice it looks funny, label equals label. Well, this label here is the parameter that we're accepting here, where this label here is identifying the parameter by name from the function it's calling text field with dropdown. You don't have to go with my names as long as this name equals this name and this name equals this name. Call it whatever you want to make it more clear. Now I'm going to go down to where we're calling our function and after data in equals array list plant we'll say comma and we'll say plant name and then alt enter because we know we don't want to hard code any strings that's really bad for internationalization where we if we extract the string it will appear in strings.xml which makes translation really easy for us now i'm pretty happy with how this looks and a quick look in the emulator confirms that sure enough it is working as i wish the next part we need to do is hook up to our live data. Let's remember our class diagram here. We're currently in the main activity, and the live data lives on the view model. Now, I've already populated the live data and worked through this entire stack of iPlant service, plant service, iPlant DAO, and retrofit client instance in a previous series of videos. So we can be comfortable that the data exists. We just need to implement it. If we take a look at main view model, we see that plants is a variable of type mutable live data list plant. The way I have my view model set up, there's a fetch plants function that will launch a coroutine. And in that coroutine, we have a service that invokes retrofit. It goes out and grabs the plant data JSON and then parses it into a series of objects. So the first thing that we need to do is invoke that fetch plants function. And by the way, note that I already have a variable that declares my view model here, and I'm using coin to instantiate the view model and store it into this variable. I covered that in a previous video, but I do want to point that line out just so you know what this view model is that I'm accessing within my activity. To observe this in Jetpack Compose, we use a special function called observe as state. Prior to Jetpack Compose, we would just say observe. But observe as state will actually return a state object to us, which is what we need to make available to our Jetpack Compose components. We need a bit of a special syntax to do this. So you see val plants by view model dot plants dot observe as state. So again, prior to Jetpack Compose, we would have just view model dot plants dot observe, and then we would put some kind of a function inside of that to act when the data changes. But in Compose, we do observe as state, and we have to provide it with something to initialize it before it actually receives the data. So we just say, okay, initialize it with an empty list. Now, one very important note. Note that we're declaring a variable here and we're doing some operation here that's going to return to us a list of plants. Make sure that you use the keyword by here and not the assignment operator, the equal sign. It's really easy out of habit to use the equal sign, which is what I did when I first implemented this. And it really confused me because if you use the equal sign, the object you get back is a state object that is wrapping that list of plants. If you use the by operator, then it essentially unwraps the list of plants from that state object, and it makes the list of plants immediately usable. So just a, a caution there, it's really e easy to put in the equals. You don't want to do that. You want to do the by. And at this point, we have our plants collection, and it's being observed. Now, the neat thing is with Jetpack Compose and with observables, as soon as the data changes, it's going to get passed into our composable functions automatically. And remember what a composable function is. It's a function annotated with a composable annotation, and it means data comes in, UI elements come out. So as the live data changes, our user interface will adapt to it automatically. 
So as confusing as that line might be, it actually is very powerful. So what we need to do next is pass this into our specimen facts function, which is what starts off that whole composable chain. And that function is not currently set up to accept this collection, so let's change it. So I've added this plants parameter here of type list of plants, and remember we can do that because we use that by operation, which unwraps the state from the list of plants. And then I'm assigning it a default value in case this has been invoked from anywhere else. And from here, it's quite straightforward. We simply take that plants collection, which has been passed in, and we pass it on down to the composable function we added, text field with dropdown. Now, I'm doing it via the specimen facts function simply because I already had the specimen facts function in my activity prior to this video. If you're doing a brand new user interface, you don't necessarily have to jump through this hoop. You could call text field with dropdown usage directly from your activities on create and then set content function. I just want to include this into a layout that I've already created. And now for the moment of truth. I go into plant name and I start typing EA and sure enough you notice it is auto-completing based on what I type and I can choose Eastern Redbud. You notice it's showing three items. That's easy to change. Right here where we have this take, there's a hard-coded three. You know, you could even pop that up as a parameter and then default it to three. Probably a good idea. And in the land of Kotlin, it's easy to do with the default value. I've snapped a couple of breakpoints so that we can look at this on our own pace. And I'm restarting the emulator now. We see now the emulator is starting, and it's starting to draw our screen. So we're in our onCreate method because this activity is being created. Now we're telling the view model to fetch the plants, and it's going to do this by accessing a JSON stream using coroutines. So it's going to happen in essentially a separate thread or a separate process so that our user interface can remain responsive to the user. So we kick that off, but we know that's going to happen in a second in a separate process, so we won't necessarily get immediate results. So the first time around, the plants variable that we have here will likely not be populated with anything. It will start as that empty list. We navigate in and it starts to draw our composable. And I have a breakpoint set in the composable where we can take a look at this plant collection that gets passed in, and we see sure enough. First time around, data zero. Let's continue and let it run. I let it go a few more moments. It went back up to set content. I had the video paused at that point. It came back down and now take a look at data in, size 5,950. So sure enough, look, we have our plant results and now we're going to populate our dropdown with that. Let's go ahead and let it resume. I can go into my user interface. And note that as I start typing, it starts auto-completing against that list of nearly 6,000 plants. I chose Eastern Wahoo and set another breakpoint in the IDE. And take a look when I expand on this. Remember that variable we made called STR selected data. Sure enough, you see it is populated with Eastern Wahoo. So in this video, we've seen how to combine live data with Compose in something that's similar to an autocomplete text view that we used to have back in the XML layout days. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. I'll have this pushed up to GitHub so that you can take a look and you can use it as you please. Thank you.